It's amazing how people don't use their power and authority correctly. See, there's two powerful things that we've got to understand. The word says something. As a man thinks, so he is or he becomes. So we know that the enemy is going to try to manipulate your thoughts. If he can manipulate your thoughts, he can manipulate your imagination. If he can manipulate your imagination, he can manipulate your desires. Does everybody understand that? See, people give the devil too much power because they've opened the door to allow him to. Does everybody understand that? We have the power and authority. The Bible says that the devil can't touch us only if we let him. There's another law. So that's a law in itself. As a man thinks, so he is. You know, and the people are in mental institutions because they agreed with what the voice said. Does everybody understand? They agreed with what a voice told them. Or they agreed because they felt something. See, feelings have a voice. And once they agreed with it, they become nutty and fruity. And it ain't good fruits. The first bondage that brings an individual in is called fear. I was like that when I was out using dope. I saw things everywhere. I lived a life of fear. The first fear is when I was going to get my next hit. The second one was always out running the police. And the third one was, I didn't know what the heck I was afraid of. But I was just afraid. See, fear is a bondage started all by a voice. By an impression. That's how the enemy gets to you and I. It starts with a simple impression of a voice. Now, that's why it's important for me and you to live in the future, not the past. Because only he can attack you from the past, not the future. That's why the word says, those who set their minds on the Lord have peace. Because they're setting their minds in the future. They're believing what God says who they are, not what the voice says who they are. They're not standing by how they feel, what they've experienced, or what's occurred to them. Because the word says if you want to be a vessel of honor used by the master, you must cleanse everything from your past. So you cannot have any attachments to your past. If you do, you're still in bondage. That's why people never get free. Because they're still holding on to lies of the past, bringing them up in the present and calling them truth when they're a lie. But you don't know what happened to me. I don't care. You're either going to stand on truth or how you feel or what's happened in your life. This is where people have to break away. They have to break out from all of this stuff. They're still living in the past. And, and trying to manifest and convince themselves that their past is their present. That's how they stay in bondage. That's how they stay bound all the time. They can never get free. Never. Until they finally make that decision. That choice to set their minds on the Lord and on the future of what he says. That's why people go to medication. You know what that does? It keeps them in the past. Numbsify their present. Oppression. All of these other goofy medications. Bipolar. I wonder where they came up with that. Must have been Alaska. <laughs> Something happened in, the, in that snow out there. Bipolar. Must have been one of those psychologists got attacked by a bear. He outran him and never came back to his senses, called it bipolar. He couldn't bear it. He couldn't bear it, you're right. <laughs> so he called it bipolar. He thought he saw a polar bear. It wasn't a putty cat. 
But we are in a time right now where things are just so crazy. Amen? Amen. Did you ever see that cartoon with Sylvester and the what, Sweepy? <laughs> I, thought, I thought of putting it. I did. Glory. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Am I okay? Yes. I'm blessed. <laughs> Remember, on the anointing, I can say anything. <laughs> Hebrews 12. Glory. Oh, the second one. So the first one is a law also. As a man thinks, so he is or becomes, right? The second one is what you sow is what you reap. Now, how many of y'all know you don't reap right away? Right away? How many of you know it can take 10 years to reap? You never know. See, because the enemy holds that. He holds it. Well, I don't understand why all these things are happening now. Because you forgot what you sowed. Does everybody get it? See, if you try to justify your sowing in the flesh, it gets bigger. Your reaping is multiplied. So see, people don't realize that some of the things they're going through, they're trying to look at how they can blame it. I don't understand. I don't deserve this. Why am I going through this? Because you have forgotten what you sowed years ago. Two days ago, three days ago, you have forgotten. But see, there's a book of remembrance, and I believe the devil has one too. And he brings it before the Lord. He says, you know, Lord, this individual did this. Remember, he's the accuser of the brethren. I haven't done anything about it yet. I know they repented, but you know what? There was that span of justification, that span of blame. That's where the devil has the open door. Even though it's under the blood, it hasn't been fulfilled. Does everybody understand this? See, so, now we know that the word says if you're in position, that all things are going to work to the good. So no matter what the devil has on you, it's going to turn to the good if you stay in position. Because he's going to come back to attack you again to try to get you to sow in the flesh. Why? So he can hold that for another time. See, as a storehouse of remembrance with all of our names on it, he pulls it out when he can. Do you remember? Do you remember? Until that is emptied. So what does the Lord try to do? He tries to get us to a position to empty all the stuff that the enemy has on us. Is everybody okay? So again, these are two laws. So stop looking at everything else because what you and I have done, we bring on ourselves. It isn't about another person. It's not anything what anyone else has done. It's not anything that anyone should have done. It's me and you. We bring it on ourselves. But I don't understand. You're not going to because you won't remember what you sowed in the flesh. At such and such day, at such and such time that you haven't reaped from yet. Is everybody okay? Hebrews 12. Oh, happy days. We got a bird in this place. <laughs> My wife is squeaking. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> she got these new shoes, you know. So we're, we're in the hotel, we're and she puts on her new shoes, and we're walking down the hallway in a hotel. I'm here. I'm looking all over the place. And I'm thinking maybe it was something I'm carrying. I'm checking my pockets. I'm thinking, man, do you hear that bird? Every once in a while, I'm thinking, what? 
And I said, and so I stopped. And she's going every once in a while, every four or five steps, it goes, <laughs> it's you. You're squeaking. <laughs> there it is, you hear it? There it is again. It's going to make my bird jealous. Romans 12, 25. Only here on a Sunday. <laughs> Aren't you glad we're not religious? <laughs> Praise God. Sure got hot in here, though. 1225, Hebrew. Hebrew, twice today. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy days. <laughs> Hebrews 1225. So remember those two things that are vitally important. As you think, so you're going to become. So as you begin to sense thoughts that shouldn't be there, that are not edifying, thoughts that are bringing bondage, that are bringing fear, thoughts of hatred, thoughts of the flesh, thoughts, don't agree with them because they're not from God. And don't let anybody tell you that God is allowing it. Does anybody understand? Because we tie his hands. He doesn't want it, but we tie his hands because we agree with it. When we agree with something else, we disagree with him. Is everybody okay? Okay. But I love the Lord and start agreeing with what he says and stop disagreeing with what that voice and emotion says. And you won't have troubles. See, the one thing God's trying to get us to is a mind of Christ. He's trying to get us to become like-minded. Well, we can't become like-minded unless we have the mind of Christ. So there's got to be an exchange going on. Amen? Amen? Verse 25, let's speak. See that you do not what? Refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then what? How many of y'all know his voice shakes? Shook the earth. But now he is promising yet once more I shake not only earth but also what? The heavenlies, that means the unseen, the eternal places, the unseen realm. He is going to shake. He's going to begin to drive out into the open. That's what shaking does. What does it do? It drives out into the open. Why is God going to drive it out into the open? So you and I can destroy it. In verse 27, now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Anything that's attached to Christ will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, do you see that? We are a part of something that can't be shaken no matter what. Only the things that are not of the kingdom of God will be shaken. So there are things that are thoughts, there are emotions, there are all kinds of things that are shaking. Because they're not from him. People have dreams, visions, and false revelations that are not of God. Anything that brings you into bondage ain't God. Hello. One thing God doesn't do is tell people about his other people. 
Does everybody understand that? He doesn't tell a person about other people. You don't have to. You know them by the fruit. Amen? Now, he may bring to you to pray for someone. Pray for this person. Does everybody understand? But remember, God is in, the, in, in, in his ministry is edification and exposure. It's edification and exposure. He's not going to expose people's dirty laundry to you. Does everybody understand that? He doesn't have to. You'll know by the fruit. Amen? Is everybody okay? This is important because there's too much familiar spirit influence. Too much. People are allowing every little thought and every little emotion and every little thing, and they agree with it, and boom, it's caught. And once it's caught, it begins to plant root. And then people can't get rid of it, and they wonder why they're in a state of confusion. They can't maintain focus. Listen, those are areas of influential demonic forces. People can't get rest. They have a hard time sleeping sometimes. Of course, if you drink three cups of coffee before you go to bed, you're going to have a hard time sleeping. Hello? Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Reverence and godly fear. For our God is a what? He's a consuming fire. The voice that shakes the earth physically seen and the heavens spiritually unseen is to expose and remove all things that are corrupt and disconnected to the kingdom of Christ. These are called end time shakings which we're in right now. End time shakings, which things are being shaken that have never been shaken like this before. In Matthew 24. What's the purpose of it? To expose and to drive out. See, if you're trying to figure it out, it's planting more root. People spend more time trying to figure it out instead of driving it out. Psalm, or Matthew 24, I'm sorry, in verse 3. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming. The sign of what? You're coming, and at the end of the age. I'm going to tell you one of the signs of his coming is there's more shaking. The closer, he's on an approach pattern right now. The closer he gets, the more shaking is going to happen in this earth. Because light is now penetrating darkness. I'm sharing with you again, hold on to this. He is approaching. And you're going to see more and more exposure, more and more shaking. Weather, land, earthquakes, evil corruption, all kinds of things are shaking. People's lives are shaking. Everything that can be shaken, that's not connected to the kingdom of Christ, will be brought to the surface so it can be removed. That's what's going on right now. This will continue for the next few years. It will increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4, and, and Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no one does what? That no one does what? That no one does what? Deceive you. Deceives you, misleads you, tells you a lie. Now, this, that no one, let me exp broaden that a little, that no voice or emotion deceive you. 
For many will come in my name saying, I am a Christian. I am a prophet. I am a teacher. I am an evangelist. I am whatever. I am the Christ. And will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. That's a shaking. We are seeing ethnic groups. We are seeing the high level of political and media promotion of racism. Well, the, because they don't have any agenda. The only thing they can cry out is racism. Their whole focus is to bring down the president, not to promote America. They are not only anti-Christ, they are anti-American. We are seeing this globally, not only in the United States. But can you imagine this? Because, see, they, the media is totally corrupt. And it's amazing how many people are still watching CNN and NBC and all these other goofy places, listening, watching The View. Believe me, I don't know what view they came from. But it ain't from above. Their view's from below. And, and, and in this, we are seeing such an explosive shaking to where things are shaking and, and being exposed, and, and, and they can't hold on to these things. But so many people are being deceived. They're still holding on to the lies. They're still holding on to deception. And because it comforts them, and they don't even realize that it's comforting to them, it now becomes associated with a familiar spirit that brings them comfort. I'll never forget one day I was praying for an individual, and the Lord showed me that he had a teddy bear. But it was spiritual, and that teddy bear was a familiar spirit. And I commanded that spirit to loose and leave him. Power God hit him. And he got up. He said, I feel naked. I said, right, because you've been deceived and comforted by the wrong thing. Do you know that he took off looking for his teddy bear? That familiar spirit. See, people begin to live in turmoil, and it becomes a comfort to them. Even though it's tor tormenting them, they want to get rid of it, but they're not willing to change it. I want to get rid of it, but they're not willing to change it. You can counsel them 24 hours a day, and until they finally accept the counsel, they won't change. This is where we're at right now. There's a demonic hold on people's minds, and they're not willing to exchange they're not willing to change. They cry out, change. They cry out to the Lord, help, help, help. But he ain't answering them. Why? Because they already gave him the answer and they refused it. Is everybody okay? For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and pestilence. These are shakings. And earthquake in various places. These are shakings. Many people will get sick. I got a call one day from my brother. He was very upset, hurt, couldn't believe it. Told me he had cancer first words out of my mouth does he have your attention he said yes it's too bad we had to get to this it's changed his whole life around he now praises the Lord he gives Jesus all the glory because he's in the process of being healed it's a totally different thing see People, God is getting people's attention. God didn't bring the sickness on them. Amen. 
We bring it on ourselves. Again, as a man thinks, so he is. What you sow is what you reap. When I went astray, I was afflicted. So just because things don't seem to be, things were going great for a while and all of a sudden things aren't going good, it's because your reaping hasn't been completed yet. Is everybody okay? Oh, happy days. Let's go a little further. It says in verse 8, and all these are the beginning of what? Sorrows, <laughs> they're beginning of shakings for what? To expose and drive out. And then they will deliver you up to tribulation and they will attempt to kill you. You will be hated by all nations, all ethnic groups for my name's sake. Christians are hated more than ever before. And then many will be offended and will betray one another, and will hate one another. The many false prophets, let me tell you, a false prophet is the media, music industry, hello? Why? Because anything that's promoting an agenda that is anti-Christ is a false prophet. It's not just a person, it's a message, amen? It's an agenda. And many false messages, agendas, prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound. Well, why will lawlessness abound more? Because they're beginning to believe it. They're accepting it. As a man thinks, so he is. Amen. And what you sow is what you reap. They'll begin to believe it. They'll begin to accept it. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. There's an organization called Antifa now. I don't know if you've seen it. They're all over. A bunch of wimpy students. They got to wear a mask. And the police protect them. Why? They persecute Christians, righteousness, and everything else. And the police, because they only show up in places that are run by Democrats, because they're protected by the police. I want to see them go down where the hell's angels hang out. Amen. I want to see them go down where a few other places I know hang out. They wouldn't dare show up there. But our president is trying to qualify them as a terrorist organization because they are. They bring a lot of destruction. But it's amazing how nobody does anything. They just stand back. It's been on the news many times. Even a news reporter was beaten like crazy by them. Spit on, all kinds of stuff. I'm like, what the heck? And the police do nothing. But again, this is all exposure, isn't it? Why? Because if you look at every Democrat run city, town, or state, it's not only corrupt, but it's disgust. It's disgusting. People are starving in places, they're not being taken care of because their purpose is power with no agenda. They want to bring down the United States. They don't want to promote it. They want to bring it down. They're for one world order because they're servants of darkness. They've been taken captive in their minds. It says here, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be what? Saved. Saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come, whether they believe it or not. It's going all over. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the, him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. 
And let him who was in the field not go back to get his clothes. Why? Because something event is about to happen. The largest shaking is called the rapture. That will be the largest shaking of the global world will be the removal of the body of Christ. Amen. So, we are going to see many emotional shakings. Does everybody understand that? There's a lot of theories going out. Violence will rise. Sickness will increase. Physical, emotional, and spiritual shakings. Agendas that promote heartlessness. Promoting a unified society that is promoters of violence, abortion. We are seeing this right now. See, darkness is trying to unify and trying to bring people who are in deception into their unification so that they promote. So they offer gifts. They offer free health care, free immigration, free license. You can vote for them and you don't even need an ID. All of these things is because of what is happening. They are moving as quick as they can because they know their time is short. Isaiah 24. End time shakings. Isaiah 24, verse 17. God is raising up intercessors. To combat and destroy these places that are being exposed. Remember, exposure is for you and I to take authority to drive out. In verse 17, Isaiah 24. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on the high the host of exalted ones. On the earth, the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And they will be shut up in prison. After many days, they will be punished. Why? Because the exposure is ex moving. The shaking is causing exposure, which is exposing the wickedness and corruption. God is shaking the whole world. It's not just United States. Again, if you could watch some of the other... Uh, medias to where on, on YouTube and stuff like where people are living in other countries because now the true media are the people. That's why they got a cell phone and a video. That's why God established Q with Trump because Q is the promoter of the true media which is an intelligence organization which is their righteous injustice they promote Christ, and they're the true media that tells the truth through people that are out there sending back videos. People don't realize that Paris, France, is crumbling. So now you've got Google and all the other high major media companies. Where are they moving to? Canada. To avoid the laws of here. 
because they're coming down. So you got people in other countries that are taking film of all of these uprisings. China is uprising tremendously. People are being killed and imprisoned. They're fighting for their lives and they're coming against their government. And you know they're carrying American flags. I'm telling you. They're carrying American flags because of what God is doing with this president in this office. What's he promoting? Freedom in Christ. He is promoting freedom in Christ. You don't think the ruler of this earth and the Antichrist organizations and regimes are going to sit back? They will lie, they will cheat, and they will mislead as many people as they can. Canada's ruled by demonic forces. That's why the major media corporations will start moving there. I mean, we're seeing so many things happen. Here's the shaking. So look at you and I need to do something when we see this. We need to call destructive fire down on a few places. How about CNN, MSNBC, ABC, BBC, The View? How about Google, Apple, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube? How about all these places so that God begins to expose and remove those leaders? How about billionaire, trillionaire, and millionaires that are involved in corruption and destruction? In regimes. See, it's up to me and you to remove them because his job is to expose them. He's given me, you, the authority with the keys to bind and loose, with the authority to call down fire, with authority in the name of Jesus Christ through the blood and the power of the anointing of Christ Jesus to move mountains, to move everything out of the way. If people quit taking all their time in the morning praying for themselves and start interceding. Oh, Lord, I need this. Oh, Lord, I need that. Oh, Lord, I, 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 I. Too many people's prayers are about I. Don't get me wrong. You need to pray for yourself to a period of time, but then that's it. Get dressed, get filled, get delivered, get healed, and start fighting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. He says that, in verse 21 again, it will come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of the exalted ones, on the earth, the kings of the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in a pit. He will shut up in the, he'll shut them up in the prison. After many days, they will be what? Punished. punished. Then the moon will be disgraced and the sun ashamed, for the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And before his elders gloriously. Oh, hallelujah. Fear, hell, confusion are on the earth right now. Fear, hell, and confusion are on the earth right now. Because darkness is being exposed by the light, and darkness can't comprehend the light because it brings confusion to darkness. Amen? This is the shaking of the Lord and the awaking of the captives so that judgment to the wicked can be executed, but it is executed by me and you. Does everybody understand that? Go to Psalm 149 for a second. Happy days. Psalm 149. Psalm 149, verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Psalm 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. To what? Execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. 
to execute on them the what? Written judgment. This honor have all his saints. This is a part of our mission. Amen? Luke 21. End time shaking. Everyone say, I'm called to battle. Called to battle. <laughs> My purpose is to what? Destroy Satan's kingdom. And my destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many as possible. So you have a call, you have a purpose, and you have a destiny. You're called to battle. Your purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And your destiny is to infiltrate and rescue as many souls as possible. We were rescued for this purpose. That was our rescue. I, I, you know, we do not want to be rescued in vain. Luke 21, verse 25. Let's speak it. And there will be what? Signs. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. This is a shaking going on. How many of y'all know that the seas are roaring right now? There are tsunami, tsunamis, there's earthquakes, all kinds of things. Look, at you're not hearing hardly anything on the news. This has to be searched out. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven will be what? Shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Woohoo! Because your redemption draws near. Let's go a little further. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree, which means Israel, and all the trees. When they are already budding, you will see and know yourselves that summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves. Lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and the day come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on the, all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So we see distress of nations. In other words, there'll be ethnic groups cultures, occults, the sea, the land, the climate, the sun, the moon, the stars, the heavens, even hell will be shaken. Everything is shaking right now. Governments, politicians, health organizations, stocks and bonds, everything is shaking right now. There isn't anything that's not shaking. Hollywood is shaking. Movie industry, music industry, <laughs> technology, Colleges, education, all of these are being shaken. For what? To expose so that you and I remove. Why? Because the true light and the offsprings of the true light are arising. Jesus is approaching the earth. Amen? Psalm 5. All media is shaking. Charities are shaking. Foundations are shaking. Everything is being shaken. Marriages are shaking. 
companies are shaping, shaking, corporations are shaking. Remember, anything that's not attached to Christ is being shaken. In verse 1, Psalm 5, verse 1, Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I will pray, my voice you will hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, I will look up. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. In other words, wickedness, boastful, falsehood, deceitful, and bloodthirsty individuals. God hates. They will not dwell with him. They will be shaken. In Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Wickedness is being exposed tremendously. Shaking to expose evil, corruption, even associations. People are still associating with their history instead of associating with their destiny. Do you understand that? Because they're still living in their past. They have more association with their past than they do their future. Oh, happy days. Verse 1, verse 30, uh, Psalm 36. An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes. When he finds out his iniquity and when he hates the words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed and he sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. He does not what? Abhor evil. In other words, there's no fear of God. In other words, he speaks whatever he wants to speak. His mouth is full of deceit. He's a liar or she's a liar. They've lost wisdom understanding and discernment and they do not hate evil they do not hate evil so they compromise it they put up with it you know one of the things that I can't stand is when a Christian prays and says in his name because they're ashamed, they'll offend someone to say it in the name of Jesus. I hate that. That's offensive to the Lord. Never deny the name of Jesus, because he'll deny your name. Amen? We see that happening all the time, especially when some of the political things are going, in his name. Whose name? Whose name? The governor's name? The pope's name? <laughs> Whose name? And then you get someone that comes up, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes. They're not ashamed of the name of Christ. Believe me, I've been thrown out of many places. I had lunch with a bunch of brothers in Christ yesterday. We were giving some of our stories, and they looked at me and said, man, you get thrown out everywhere. <laughs> hey, I don't care. I got to stand before him. And not stand before him then, I stand before him every day. There are other things I'd like to say I wouldn't mind getting thrown out of, but he hasn't released that one yet. Oh, happy day. Psalm 52. Glory. Hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, and glory. Psalm 52, starting at verse 1. Why do you boast in evil, almighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully, you love evil more than good. Now, I want you to grab hold of this. Because this person is speaking in the flesh more than in the spirit. He says, you love evil more than good. Lying rather than speaking. Righteousness. You love all devouring wor words. You deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him, saying, Here is a man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his, in his wickedness. wickedness. Strengthened himself in his own wickedness. Hosea chapter 7. Oh, yes. End time shakings. God is shaking everything that can be shaken. Lives, businesses. Hosea 7, starting at verse 1. Everybody there? When I would have healed Israel, says the Lord, then the iniquity of Ephraim was uncovered, and the wickedness of Samaria, for they have committed fraud. A thief comes in, and a band of robbers takes spoil outside. They do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own deeds have surrounded them, he said, they forgot that I remember all their sowing in the flesh. They are before my face. They make a king glad with their wickedness and princes with their lies. They are all adulterers. Like an oven heated by a baker, he ceases stirring the fire after kneading the dough until it is leavened. In the day of our king, princes have made him sick, inflamed with wine. He stretched out his hand with scoffers. They prepare their heart like an oven while they lie in wait. They, their baker sleeps all night. In the morning, it burns like a flaming fire. They all are, they are all hot like an oven and have devoured their judges. All their kings have fallen. None among them calls upon me. Wow. He said he would have restored them, he would heal them, but they were exposed because they were caught with fraud. But God remembers how much they've sowed in the flesh. He remembers. Matthew 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him, sat him in the midst of them, and he said, Surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, he doesn't mean the mentality of a child. Hello? It means the heart of a child. All trusting. Willing to learn. Amen? Therefore, whoever humbles himself, is everybody okay? Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in heaven. 
Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones to, be, to believe in, in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. In other words, this is when individuals abuse children, which is the most thing that God hates of anything. It's the, it is the most destructive area that God goes after, people that abuse children. And, of course, the enemy knows this, doesn't he? So that's why the enemy abuses children, sheds blood, sexually, perversely abuses and tortures them. That's what God is after right now. That's why we have seen more arrests of child smuggling, molestation, organizations that are involved in all of this. Hollywood thrives on it. They thrive on it. They thrive on children's blood and sacrifice of them. They even eat their flesh. They thrive on it. That's the demonic realm. It is evil and wicked. And it's not been so exposed as it is now. That's why God put Donald Trump, his first call with Donald Trump was to go after those that are going after God's children. Not only the born, but the unborn. It says, verse 7, Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to the man to, by whom the offense comes. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. If it is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into an everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Wow. He's come to save which what? That was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes Astray does he not leave the 99 to go uh, the, to, into the mountains to seek the one that is straying? And if he should find it, assuredly I say to you, he rejoices more over than sheep, than the one over the 99 that did not go astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Powerful. Again, the unborn and the born. It is the worst offense towards God is to abuse one of them. <clears throat> Isaiah 15. Isaiah 15. Uh, let's make that Isaiah 5. Just remove that one there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 5 and verse 13. End time shaking. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have what? No knowledge. No knowledge. Their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged itself and opened its mouth beyond measure. Hmm. Their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he who is jubilant shall descend into it. People shall be brought down. Each man shall be humbled, 
and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God, who is holy, shall be hallowed in righteousness. Then the lambs shall feed in their pasture, and the waste places of the fat ones strangers will eat. Woe to those who draw iniquity with the cords of vanity, and sin as if with a cart rope, that say, Let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come, that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to men mighty at drinking wine, who mix, who, who, woe to men valent for mixing intoxicating drink, who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away justice from the righteous. Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root will be as rotten and their blossom will ascend like dust. Because they have rejected the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, the anger of the Lord is aroused against his people. He has stretched out his hand against them and stricken them. And the hills trembled. Their carcasses were as refuge in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Powerful. So we see woe without eternity. Many people are calling good, evil, and evil good. I mean, it's incredible what's going on right now. People are offended because God is mentioned. They get offended. Ephesians 5. Why is this all happening? Because there's a shaking to expose. Glory. Ephesians 5. Imitators. 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 Be imi Listen, you can't be imitators of God if you're not connected. You can't be imitators of God if you don't have a sound mind. Amen. It's impossible. You can proclaim all you want. You can say God has done this, God has done that, but if you ain't got a sound mind, you can't imitate him. Amen? Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this is, you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God, Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not partake with them. Hello, don't agree with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them so that they can be removed. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things are exposed, that are exposed are made manifest by the light, so we know that he is approaching for whatever makes him manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? Because of what? The days are what? Evil. Wow. The days are evil. Romans chapter 1. Romans 1. I used to be a Roman. 
I was a Roman Catholic, Roman for the truth. Oh, happy days. Thank you, Jesus, for freedom. Snap. Romans 1, 18, let's speak it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Is this happening? Yes. Why do you think the shaking's going on? But remember, the shaking is to expose. It's to bring to light so that it can be exposed. So all things of hidden darkness are to bring to light, to expose. And who are they supposed to be driven out by? Us. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were dark, and it started with a thought. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship the, and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Is everybody there? Okay. We'll go there. Don't go there. Who told me that? Glory. Second Thess chapter 2 starting at verse 1. My brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in where? Mind. Or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Hmm. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness, hallelujah, is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until we are taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So this is all a part of the shaking. Amen? This is the part of the shaking. Go to Revelation 6. Oh, glory. Everybody okay? Glory. Revelation 6 and verse 12. Let's speak it together. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great what? earthquake and the sun became black as a sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind then the sky receded as a scroll when it was rolled up 
and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, commanders and mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? And I'm going back to Matthew 27. Matthew 27, in verse 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then, the veil, the, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth did what? Quake. And the rocks were split. And the graves were what? They were what? Opened. Opened. And many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Why, I would say there was a great shaking. And coming out of the graves, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Again, the final shaking will be the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Ha <laughs> ha. Four. First Thessalonians chapter four. Come on, you brought your Holy Ghost eraser, right? Is everybody there? But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Christ, in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a what? A shout. That's called a shaking. With the voice of an archangel. That's called a shaking. And with the trumpet of God, that's called a shaking. Believe me, the rapture will not be something silent. And the dead in Christ will rise first. People are going to freak. And then we, can you imagine all of the bodies that were thrown in the ocean and, you know, scattered, all of the people that were cremated, scattered. God's going to gather it all. No matter where it is. And the saints will come down and grab their bodies. They'll be united with a brand new glorified body. Praise God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. That will be the final shaking for the body. And we will be removed. The same thing that happened when Jesus rose from the dead. That shaking where people it was a mini rapture. But they weren't taken to heaven. They were taken out of the grave. Amen? And put back on the earth to be a witness. But for those who are asleep, dead in Christ now, they will be taken from the graves or from heaven, come with Jesus, and their bodies will be taken from the graves or from the land and be restored and get a brand new glorified body. And the world will see this. They will be shaken. There will be many believers who thought they were right with God because they were good who will be left behind. And they'll have to go through tribulation. 
Remember, only those that are manifesting righteousness and justice will enter the kingdom of God. Many will have to be refined to get home. So, Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed, granting us understanding and wisdom. that we may be prepared. You know, I want to share with you that there is a price to be taken alive. I want to say that again. There is a price to be taken alive in the rapture. Enoch was the example of that price. Elijah was the example of that price. Jesus was the example of that price. Remember, Christ is coming for Christ. Amen? So Christ must be expressed and manifested in our life so that we will be taken alive. If Christ is not manifested and expressed, we won't be taken alive. We'll have to go through tribulation. I can only share with you that if you are left for tribulation, do not take the mark, no matter what you do. Starve to death and let them cut your head off. Or hide out somewhere till Jesus comes again. Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. Thank you for the warning. Thank you for the shaking. And thank you for the preparing. We give you all glory, honor, and praise for what you're about to do in us and through us as you continue to shake our own lives so that we may be set free from the carnal character into the character of Christ. Thank you.